We've taken a look at reading audio files off of disk using two objects, ReadSF, which allows us to read longer files off of disk, but we can't do any sorts of, of manipulation, and a combination of SoundFiler and TabRead4, which lets us read shorter files into a table in memory, um, and it allows us also to do lots of manipulation, but the file length is limited. Now we'll take a look at writing files to disk using the counterparts of those objects. So the counterpart to read SF is write SF. We can write files to disk uh, any length, and um, then we could queue them up later. We're not going to do that in this particular movie. And we could also write files to memory using uh, tab write. So I've got a really simple sequencer here, and it's using essentially two oscillators that are closely tuned so we can get some beating. And I'm reading MIDI pitches from a table here. They're way up high. These pitches are like 50, 60, and the table's only normalized to uh, 1 and negative 1. And then I'm turning those frequencies into pitches using MTOF, which is MIDI to frequency. Let's take a listen. And these two dials here are just expressive control. Okay, and this on-off at the bottom is a simple gate. I'm just cutting the amplitude. I'm not really stopping the sequence. So if I wanted to record a performance of this sequence onto disk, I can use write SF. W-R-I-T-E-S-F tilde. Now the creation argument for write SF is the number of channels. So here I'll say two. I'll take the final gain stage and I'll pipe it into write SF. And as you would expect, the left inlet is the left channel right inlet is the right channel. Now, I'll need to create some arguments to um, create the file, start writing to the file, and then stop writing to the file. So the argument to create the file is called open, and then the name of the file. We'll call this beating sequence.wave. It's a bit strange to me that it's not called create beating sequence.wave, but I digress. Now, this is being written in the same directory as the file, um, or the PD patch. So if we wanted to write to a different directory, you'd have to do either relative addressing or absolute addressing um, and get that down. But here we're just going to write to the same directory as the patch. I'll put that into the left inlet of write SF. And now I'll create two other arguments, start and stop. And these do exactly what you think they would. Start will start recording and stop will stop recording. You can also create an argument called print which will print information about the file that's recorded uh, but we won't do that. As well you could get a little crafty with your patch and you could sequence all of these things so that the recording starts at the right time and stops at the right time. I'm just going to do this really low tech. I'm going to start it with the mouse and stop it with the mouse. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create the file. So I'll click this open message. And now the file is on the hard drive ready to be written to. I'll go ahead and um, open the gate here and then start it and go. And I'll stop. Okay, now let's take a look at the file in QuickTime. I'll find it on the hard drive and open it with the QuickTime player. I'm using the QuickTime player here just because I really want to get a really quick read of the file. I don't want to have to go through the rigmarole of creating objects to read the file in PD. Now I'll play it, and this is what I've recorded. Now notice there is some clicking at the start and the stop. Um, that's because I didn't really take care to make sure that um, at the start and the stop the file was crossing the zero crossing at the right point. And so you would want to make sure you handled the amplitude correctly so that you weren't all of a sudden jumping um, off of the zero crossing and creating clicks. Anyhow, so I'll quit the QuickTime player. And that really is it to recording um, a file onto disk. I recommend that you come up with some sort of timer system for starting and stopping because you could start recording and then forget about it. Um, I know I've done that and then you, you've created a very long file on disk. Now the next method is to write the file to memory or to a table or array. So let's create an array and we'll call it sound file. 
I'll make it two seconds long. So you're gonna take the sample rate and multiply by two. So the sample rate is 44,100 samples a second. So I'll multiply that by two, we get 88,200. So now this particular array is two seconds long. And I'll use tab right tilde and the name of the array, sound file. This is similar to write SF in that we're going to feed it two arguments, start and stop. Now, one of the cool things about using tab write instead of uh, write SF is that I could in the start um, message say at what point in the table I wanted to start. So I could start halfway in, I could start, uh, you know, right before the end. And you would just do that by typing a space after start and then the index you'd want to start at. We're not going to do that right now. Okay, so I'll need to take the final gain stage and put it into tab right and put these two messages into tab right also. Now tab right will automatically stop when it's reached the end of the table, but I could physically stop it by clicking the button here, stop. Let's go ahead and open the gate and then click start. And so it's only two seconds long. So here we have the file written to the table. If we want to read this quickly, we'll just use tab play and the name of the array, sound file. And this will accept a very simple one or zero to start or stop playback. So we'll use a toggle. I'm going to take advantage of the gain structure that's already set up in the sequencer so that I don't have to create another one. And so I'll disconnect the sequencer from the final gain stage. I'm going to increase the amplitude and then pipe the output of tab play into the final gain stage. Make sure I choose the left uh, output or left inlet rather. It'd be bad news if I chose the other one. And now we'll play it. And th that's two seconds of uh, recording from the sequence. Now, one thing we can do that is a really uh, common thing to do with uh, tab write and tab play is um, right from the microphone input, which is going to be ADC. So this is external input, ADC tilde. And now what I'll do is I'll, I will disconnect from here and I'm going to put the microphone into tab right. Okay. So let me uncheck tab play and I'll choose start test one, two, three, four, five, six. And now, I'll play it back. Turn on the gate. Test one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. And if I wanted to loop that, what I can do is create a bang. And the rightmost outlet of sound file will bang when the, um, or the rightmost outlet of tab play rather, will bang when the table is done, so you'll have it bang the playback again. Test one, two, three, four, five. Test one, two, three, four, five. Test one, two, three, four, five. Test one. Okay, so that's how you can do simple looping. Uh, you'll record essentially a line in a table to memory, and then you'll start to read it back using tab play, and then if you wanted to do some manipulation to it, you could use sound filer and tab read four. But there you have basic recording in PD. If you want to record something longer that isn't limited by um, a table length, you would use write SF and record it straight to disk. If you wanted to use something shorter and write it to memory, you would use tab play.